This clip is about the del operator, which is the upside down triangle, and it's one of the most useful operators in mathematics. So we'll start with an overview on operators, then we'll do the del operator in Cartesian coordinates using a shorthand, then we'll do the del operator in Cartesian coordinates using longhand and see why the shorthand is so useful. And finally, we'll look at the del operator in uh, polar coordinates, and we have to do that longhand. First of all, then, a quick recap on operators. I'll take as an example an operator that's very similar to the del operator, the simple ordinary derivative d by dx. Uh, this is essentially hungry for something to differentiate. It's looking for anything on the right-hand side uh, to differentiate. If, uh, for example, I have an x squared uh, carelessly lying around here, uh, d by dx, if it comes up on the left-hand side, will differentiate it and give me 2x. Now note that this, uh, the operator d by dx, in doing the operation, um, it uses up its power, if you like. Uh, all we have left is uh, a quantity 2x at the end. The operation has finished. And I might define, for example, another operator as being x d by dx. I'll put it in brackets to emphasize it's one entity. Uh, and maybe I've got a sine x lying around, and this operator comes up on the left-hand side, operates on it, and I'll get x d by dx of sine x, which is, of course, just x cos x. Now note that the order in which I wrote x and d by dx is important. If I defined another operator to be dx, d by dx, x like that, rather careless, because now the d by dx acts straight away on the x, and that's just going to give me 1. It's not actually an operator at all. It's just a quantity 1. And as an aside, if my goal was to say, let's have some quantity such as y, uh, and then multiply it by x, and take d by dx of the whole thing, I can write that as an operator. I might decide to write it as this, um, d by dx brackets x, and then perhaps leave a sort of couple of dots uh, for the thing I want to operate on. But that's a bit messy. Um, I can also write this out though, and you can prove this for yourselves, as 1 plus x d by dx. That's one whole operator that when it acts on something like y on the right-hand side uh, will give me what I want, d by dx of x times y. Right, before we look at the del operator in Cartesian coordinates, a little recap on Cartesian coordinates. Essentially here I have three axes that I shall call, or well, the unit vectors of which I shall call ex, ey, and ez, and they're all perpendicular to each other. Now sometimes you th see these written as i, j, and k, uh, but I prefer to use ex, ey, and ez because it's easier then uh, to transform the same ideas into polar coordinates. And the del operator in Cartesian coordinates is defined as, in the x direction, d by dx. So you differentiate in the x direction, and you say we multiply that by the vector in the x direction. Plus, in the ey direction, it's d by dy. And in the ez direction, it's d by dz. So think of it, if you like, as a vector whose components are d by dx of whatever is on the right-hand side of it in the x direction, d by dy of whatever's on the right-hand side in the y direction, and d by z, dz of whatever's on the right-hand side in the z direction. And I'm going to put this into brackets to stress the fact that everything inside the brackets acts on whatever is on the right-hand side. And note two things. First of all, uh, it's a vector. It has three components, ex, ey, and ez. And secondly, it's an operator in that everything in this operator wants to act on whatever is on the right-hand side. And in Cartesian coordinates, we can write this in Cartesian shorthand that you're very familiar with. Uh, the ex component goes on the top. We get d by dx. In the middle, we get the y component, d by dy. And at the bottom, we get the z component, d by zz. So we've written those one upon each other in a one-column matrix, i.e. a vector. And that's our Cartesian shorthand. Now let's look at a couple of examples. First of all, let's look at del acting on a scalar such as p. A scalar, in other words, it's a field variable. It varies in space, but it's just a single number. It doesn't have a direction associated with it. Now this is known as grad p 
because, as we'll see in a moment, it gives you the gradient of the scalar, P. In our Cartesian shorthand, it's equal to d by dx, d by dy, d by dz, all partial derivatives, of course, acting on P. And this can be written straight away as dp by dx in the x direction, dp by dy in the y direction, and dp by dz in the z direction. And note that what we have now is a vector. We've taken a scalar, p, and we found a vector from it, uh, which is grad p. And if we've got some field uh, that contains p as a function, say, of x, z, y, and z, uh, then this vector, grad p, is the vector that points directly up the hill, i.e. in the direction of the fastest increase in p. And now for another example, let us look at del acting on a vector a. Uh, now we have to say how it's acting on the vector a, and in this case we'll use a dot product. Uh, I might also have decided to look at uh, del crossed with a, that would have given me a different answer, but uh, I'll leave that for now. Now a here is a vector field, in other words, A is a vector that takes a different value at every point in space. So the vector points in different directions depending on where you are in space. A good example of that would be a velocity field. Now when we write that, um, this is known as the divergence or div of A. Um, and when we write this out in our Cartesian shorthand, we get D by DX in the EX direction, D by DY in the EY direction, D by DZ in the EZ direction dotted with a subscript x, a subscript y, a subscript z, where ax, ay, and az are the components of the vector a in the ex, the ey, and the ez directions. And so this is equal to the top line multiplied together, which is uh, dax by dx, plus the middle line multiplied together, the middle rows multiplied together, which is d a y by d y plus the bottom rows multiplied together d a z by d z and a couple of important things to note first of all this is now a scalar uh, we've lost the vectors um, because we used a dot product and as we know a dot product of a vector with another vector gives us a scalar and it's the same thing when we've got a vector operator acting on uh, dotted with a, a vector it gives us a scalar and secondly note that uh, the result here is no longer an operator. The operation has been done. Uh, the operator, if you like, has used up its power. And so we see in Cartesian shorthand, using the del operator is really quite simple. Now, to be totally rigorous, I want to use a del operator in Cartesian coordinates longhand. So I'm going to do the same things I've just done. Del dotted with some vector a, which gives us the divergence of the vector field a. Now, in longhand, this is written as ex d by dx, ey dy dy, plus ez d by dz, dotted with ax ex plus ay ey plus az ez, and I could have written that equally well as ex ax plus ey ay plus ez az. And when I write this out fully, uh, this has nine terms in it. Now I want to look at the first term in this, um, and then the rest are really quite simple. So the first term is ex d by dx dotted with ax ex. Now the first thing to note is that the dot here um, is not affecting the d by dx. So the d by dx can move to the other side of the dot. We're going to get ex dotted with d by dx of ax ex. And the second thing to note is that this actually has two terms in it. We've got ex dotted with, sorry there are two terms within the next bracket, We've got to uh, use the product rule. So we'll get ax dex by dx plus ex dax by dx. And let's think about what these two terms mean. This one here is saying the change in the ex unit vector as we move in x. Now, if we think about our coordinate system, which has ex, ez, ey, uh, wherever we look in space, the coordinate system uh, is pointing in the same direction. In other words, as I move along um, either EX, EY, or EZ, uh, EX, EY, and EZ don't change directions. Uh, they keep pointing in the same direction. And that means that the change of EX, 
the vector ex in the x direction is equal to zero. Now we're going to find that that's not true when we look at different coordinate systems such as polar coordinate systems, but uh, in Cartesian co coordinate systems it's certainly true that d by d uh, x, y, or z of any of the unit vectors ex, ey, or z is equal to zero. So I'll rub that out and just say that dex by dx is equal to zero, and that means that we just have uh, one term left, um, which is ex dax by dx. Now the next thing to note is that we've got here, if I write out the next line, we're going to get ex dotted with ex dax by dx. Now ex dotted with ex is equal to 1, so that's just equal to dax by dx. And we'll see that in some of the other terms we get things like ex dotted with ey, and of course that is just equal to 0. So putting this all together, our nine terms uh, up here reduce down to just three non-zero terms. And those non-zero terms are dAx by dx, dAy by dy, and dAz by dz. They're all added together, and we've got the same thing that we got with our Cartesian shorthand. And finally, I want to look at polar coordinates. I'll just use two dimensions here, uh, because it's valid whether we use two or three. A little reminder then, we have some sort of imaginary x-axis. We define uh, the polar coordinates in terms of theta, the distance, the angle from that axis, and r, uh, the distance from uh, the origin. Um, so if we have a point here at coordinates r and theta, uh, then at that point the coordinate system um, has unit vector er in, in the radial direction and unit vector e theta uh, 90 degrees to that. The crucial difference between uh, radial co polars, uh, as we have here, and Cartesian coordinates is that as I move around in the field changing theta and r, my coordinate system changes as well. So at this point in the field, uh, the unit vector er is pointing in that direction, and the e theta unit vector is pointing at 90 degrees. So we can see that at different points in the field, uh, the er vector and the e theta vector are pointing in different directions. And let's look at that in a little bit more detail. Uh, if um, I go to a certain point, uh, let's say this point here, um, which is sort of horizontal, uh, and I have the unit vectors pointing in that direction, if I go a little bit further along, let's say to this point here, I'll find the unit vectors there are still pointing in the same direction. Uh, in other words, as I change, as I move in the r direction, uh, the d by dr of the unit vector e theta and uh, d by dr of the unit vector er are both equal to zero. They're not changing as I increase uh, the value of r. On the other hand, uh, as I go round, as I increase theta, the unit vectors are changing. And I'll find that as I change the theta direction, d by d theta of er is equal to, well, let's look at it, uh, if I move up in the theta direction from this black point here a little bit further on, I'll find my unit vectors have moved round, the er vector has moved up in that direction a little bit in the e theta direction, so d e r by d theta is equal to e theta, uh, and if I look at the e theta direction, d e theta by d theta, I'll find it's actually equal to minus e r. So when I'm in polar coordinates, these are the important things I need to remember, that as I go around, as I move around my system in the theta direction, uh, my unit vectors change. So let's look at the divergence of some vector field A, which is del dotted with A, now in radial polars. Now the definition of del in radi radial polars is d by dr in the er direction plus in the e theta direction it's d by d theta, so it's the same sort of thing as we had before. But note that it's not quite as simple as this. If this were dimensional, this has me dimensions meters to the minus one, theta doesn't have any dimensions yet, radians to the minus one, no dimension. What we need to do is add in a 1 over r here so that we get the same dimensions meters to the minus 1 in both terms. And this vector operator is dotted with uh, er, ar, ar is the component in the radial direction, plus e theta, a theta. And I could equally well have written those the other way around, ar, er, plus a theta, e theta. Now I might be tempted to make up a shorthand along the lines of something like this. Uh, this would be d by dr, this would be 1 upon r, d by d theta, 
dotted with a r a theta and that would give me d a r by d r plus 1 upon r d a theta by d theta but as we're going to see that's wrong it misses out one term that turns out to be very important so I'm going to rub that out and do this whole thing in longhand properly there are four terms here to start with and I've already used the trick of uh, moving the d by dr and the d by d theta to the other side of the dot product. Um, the first of these two is going to be quite easy. We know that uh, d by dr of er and d by dr of e theta are both equal to zero. That's using what I just worked out in red at the top. So the first term becomes er dotted with er d a r by dr plus e theta d a theta by dr. But in the second term we need to be more careful because the d by d theta of the unit vectors is not going to be equal to zero. So I'm going to write the second term out in full and talk through each of the terms. We still have the e theta over r dotted with, and now we're going to put the d by d theta inside this bracket and multiply everything out properly using the product rule. We're going to get an er d a r by d theta, that's the first term here, the d by d theta, plus, using the product rule, a r d e r by d theta, that's the change in the radial unit vector as we move in theta which is non-zero and the second term e theta a theta is going to be e theta d a theta by d theta plus a theta d e theta by d theta and now we can substitute in from here to say that d e r by d theta here is equal to e theta and d e theta by d theta is equal to minus e r OK, we're nearly there. Now we need to use the fact that er dotted with the er is equal to 1, and e theta dotted with e theta is equal to 1, but that er dotted with e theta is equal to 0, because e theta and er are always at 90 degrees to each other. So the next line is going to be er dotted with er times dA by dr, which is dAr by dr, the next term would be er dotted with e theta, so it's zero. So we move straight on to the er over r, so e theta over r, dotted with the terms in the remaining brackets. And these simplify down to this, where the term 1 upon r ar has come from this term, and the term 1 upon r da theta by d theta has come from the third term. So finally we get the fact that div of a in radial polars is dar by dr, plus 1 upon r d a theta by d theta, which is what we got when we tried doing some sort of shorthand on it. But we've also got this other term, plus a r upon r. And that's the term that arises when we do the analysis properly. Uh, it's the term that arises from differentiation of the unit vectors being non-zero, this term here. So to recap, we looked a little bit at operators by looking at the operator d by dx and showing how it's quite similar to this del operator. We looked at the del operator in Cartesian coordinates using a shorthand and showed that it was quite easy to manipulate. Uh, we looked then at the del operator in Cartesian coordinates doing it the long way um, to show it was the same as the shorthand way uh, and indeed show why the shorthand way is so useful and then looked at the del operator in polar coordinates doing it longhand because in polar coordinates we have to do it longhand uh, simply because the unit vectors change as we move around the field.